This Museum Connect video is inspired by these objects behind me. These objects belong to a man called Jim Smith, who lived in our local area in Salisbury for most of his life. They represent a particular moment in a particular point in history and a very particular part of Jim's life. These objects are from when Jim was a prisoner of war in Japan during the Second World War. Jim had joined the RAF and was unfortunate enough to be captured. Now we have his Danish backpack, and some photographs, but in particular some postcards that he designed himself. Um, there's a number of objects that we have of Jim's artistry, um, showing how he was expressing himself and keeping hold of his own identity at that really difficult time in his life. Jim's time as a prisoner of war will of course have had a huge impact on him. But what's important is that that was a part of his life a part of who he went on to be. As his son, Ken Smith, has been able to tell us recently. Basically, it's a chronological account of my dad's life. Um, so it started off with his growing up in Salisbury, moved on to his war service. Uh, the next bit I'm gonna write of his post-war life up on Benton Heath in the brave new world of 1950. Um, and then obviously moving on to look at how he started the shop, which was a huge gamble in many ways, um, what that developed into, and then his, um, his venture into publishing with the Frock Band books. His dad then joined the RAF, this was in 1920, and moved, um, moved here, was stationed at Old Sarah. So the family moved here in 1923, and so my dad has lived in Salisbury since, or Salisbury area since 1923. So he always considered himself more or less a native. Um, he always liked Salisbury. When my dad left school, he worked um, basically full time at his Saturday job, delivering um, batteries for radios. Uh, then he too, as a young teenager, got a well, 14 year old, uh, six, probably 16 by then, uh, managed to get a job as a trainee projectionist at the same cinema. So uh, the cinemas had quite a big, a big effect on my, uh, that side of my family uh, because my, my, my granny worked in another cinema as a cleaner. And uh, so by, by the time the war came, he was a cinema projectionist. He, he knew that there would be conscription. He wanted to have some choice in where he went. Plus, his mum had heard a radio um, appeal for men with radio knowledge to apply for the RAF. Well, my dad had always been interested in radios. He'd made his own, what he used to call cat's whisker sets, um, little tiny things, in, and he put them in a, an old sweet tin. And he had, even had one on, strapped on the back of his bike. What he didn't know, but what no, nobody in the rest of the, you know, the public didn't know is that the reason the RAF wanted them was because of radar. Um, after the, the Battle of Britain was over in uh, 1941, just about time of his birthday in June, uh, he was sent out to the Far East, to uh, what is now Malaysia. The museum has his original Dutch army pack that he carried, and many of the objects that he had in it. One of the objects which the museum hasn't got, at least not yet, is this little cigarette Case. It's made from scrap brass, probably made by um, a local craftsman, I suspect, who would uh, you know, sell it for a few cigarettes or, or whatever. Um, my dad scratched his name on it, James Smith, and he's drawn, because he was always an artist, he's drawn a sort of um, rainforest scene on the back of palm trees and at a roofed house. Yeah, my, uh, my mother in particular really loved our council house in St Michael's Road because it had central heating um, and a huge garden that my dad could landscape and he did. Then he got the chance to have a shop um, on the corner of the Greencroft. This is a, a picture of it, somebody painted later. It was called, he decided to call it a little junk shop because that's what it sold as far as he was concerned, it was junk. And it was through the shop, not only did he get to know 
get to know, get to be known by many of people, people of Salisbury. Um, but one of his customers um, knew people in the publishing world, and she had seen some of his artwork that he'd used in the shop for advertising. He used to write his own little signs with quirky little animals and things on them. She said, "You've got a talent. You you could you could write books." And he said, "Oh no, don't be silly. I couldn't do that." But of course. Jim did go on to be an author and illustrator of his own series of children's books. The museum has objects through Jim and through Ken that represent all the different parts of Jim's wonderful life. Starting with these objects and then being able to do something like have a conversation with Ken and dig into the real memories of a man like Jim Smith is what really enables us to put the flesh on the bones of the stories we're able to tell about our local history and the people in our communities. So I'm just gonna leave the last word with Ken, telling us a little bit about his father as a man of many parts and a proud military history. I think what now is, 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 is important to try and put, put that in, in context of the rest of my dad's life um, and to show that, um, you know, military service is, is part of your life but it doesn't have to be all of your life. You know, you're, a, you're another person as well. In part two of this video with artist Sophia Sample, we invite you to take part in an activity where you as an individual or as a family can create a postcard inspired by Jim's postcards as a prisoner of war.